thanks for watching and this is the part you've all been waiting for because today I will show that there are infinitely many anti-Pythagorean triplets. In other words, infinitely many integers that satisfy b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus a correction term. Because it turns out this has to do with ellipses and you may say why? Well now we can finally solve it. Because, first of all, divide both sides by b squared, and we get 1 equals a over b squared plus c over b squared minus a over b times c over b, which now you can simply relabel things as x squared plus y squared minus xy equals 1, where x is a over b, and then y is c over b. And then because the discriminant here is negative, it actually becomes an ellipse. And you can even show that that ellipse has a degree of uh, 45 degrees. And that's what Ian told me. He told me, and then the walls of Jericho came tumbling down because it turns out because of this ellipse, we're actually able to solve this problem. Because now let's analyze this problem a little bit further. So x squared minus xy plus y squared equals one. That's an ellipse tilted by 45 degrees. And mm, there is a solution to this that may be obvious, maybe not, which is zero comma minus one. In other words, the ellipse goes to 0, comma, minus 1. And here's the cool fact. It turns out there's at least one line here that intersects the ellipse and that has rational slope. So there must be a line of the form y equals m over n x, and the y-intercept is minus 1. So y equals m over n x minus 1. And the goal is to find this m over n, and that will give us our solution. Because what happens when you plug in y is m over n x minus 1 into the ellipse, then what you get is x squared minus x times m over n x minus 1 plus m over n x minus 1 squared equals 1. And then you can expand everything out x squared minus m over n x squared plus x plus m over n squared x squared minus 2 m over n x plus 1 equals 1. And then there are a bunch of convenient simplifications. Actually, yeah, not that many. One of them. <laughs> So one cancels out, but then you can factor stuff out. So this becomes 1 minus m over n plus m squared over n squared x squared and then plus x right, from plus uh, 1 minus 2m over n x equals 0. But uh, the point is, uh, x is non-zero in this problem, so we can cancel out x. And then what we get is an equation for x. So x then becomes, I think, uh, minus 1 minus 2m over n over 1 minus m over n plus m squared over n squared and this, you can simplify it so you can multiply both sides by n squared over n squared. And then I think what you get is minus n squared plus 2mn over n squared minus mn plus m squared. Eminem says hi because of mn. So let's, we found x, now let's find y, but remember y is m over n x minus 1, which becomes m over n times 2mn minus n squared over m squared minus mn 
plus n squared minus 1. And this you can simplify, so I'm not going to do the algebra, but in the end you get m squared minus n squared over m squared minus mn plus n squared. But remember, a goal was not to find x and y. A goal is to find a, b, and c. But x, remember how we defined x, it was just a over b and y was c over b. And that's where we enter the land of Oz. Because, notice, this is kind of the same form. So all we need to do is compare the coefficients, and we then get our solutions to the Pythagorean identity, which is simply a is 2mn minus n squared, b is m squared minus mn plus n squared, and c is m squared minus n squared. And it turns out for every m bigger than n, I think we needed that for this identity here, or for one of those things, uh, for every m bigger than n and co prime, otherwise you, um, you can cancel stuff out, this does give us a anti Pythagorean triplet. And in fact, and you can check that this holds. Because if you have m equals 3 and n equals 2, let's see what we get. a is 2 times 3 times 2 minus 2 squared, which becomes 12 minus 4, which is 8. b becomes 3 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 2 squared. So 9 plus 4, which is 13, minus 6, which is 7. And c is 3 squared minus 2 squared, which is 9 minus 4, which is 5. So yet again, our magic 8, 7, 5 triangle appears. And therefore, we have generated infinitely many such anti-Pythagorean triplets. And there might be other ones, but at least we found a family of them. And here's the thing. So I do want to conclude with Ian's story, because maybe this was shown centuries ago. But the pure joy was to work together on this problem with his colleagues and the grad students until they figured things out. And really, the moral is the joy of solving a problem yourself with teamwork that's really immeasurable, if you wish. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.